Welcome to this FVTC welding module on the basics of welding electricity. In this module, we'll introduce you to electricity fundamentals, parts of circuit, and welding input power. We'll start with the fundamentals. What is electricity? Electricity is the flow of electrons from one atom to the next. At the center of the atom is the nucleus. It contains neutrons, which are neutrally charged, and protons, which are positively charged. Electrons are negatively charged, and they orbit around the nucleus, similar to the way planets orbit the sun. Electrons move when we apply a force. Some materials move, or conduct electrons, more easily than others, because the electrons in their outer shell aren't bound as tightly to the atom. Some of the most conductive materials, like copper, silver, and gold, are commonly found as part of the welding circuit. By creating a circuit with a power source in line that creates voltage, we can push the electrons from one atom to the next. This creates the flow of electricity through a circuit. Let's look at how this flows through a welding circuit. Welding setups include a power source, cables, the welding gun, welding table, and the piece you're working on. Welding uses electron theory, which states that electricity moves from the negative to the positive terminal on the power source. This is an important concept as we explore concepts related to welding polarity. Say we're welding these two pieces together using GMAW. The electrons move from the power source, through the work cable, into the table, through the piece you're working on, and into the welding gun. The electrons move from the negative connection on the welding power source through the circuit and back to the positive connection. With an understanding of what electricity is, let's move on to exploring the parts of a circuit. Voltage, amperage, and resistance. Voltage. Electrons flow as a result of pressure called voltage. It's measured in volts. It is the force that causes amperage to flow, sometimes also called EMF, or electromotive force. The effects of voltage can be observed in the welding process. In this example, you will see two welds being performed. With all other variables the same, a disproportionately higher voltage produces a harsher arc with higher amounts of spatter. With a lower voltage, the bead appearance becomes more attractive. But as voltage is lowered out of proportional range, the bead becomes tall and ropey, lacking good fusion with the base metal. Resistance. Resistance is defined as the opposition to current flow. Resistance to electron flow also generates heat. Resistance works like a kink in our water hose. It restricts the flow of electrons, just as the kink restricts the flow of water. Excessive resistance in a welding circuit can come from long and or small diameter welding cables, damaged equipment, or loose connections. Furthermore, resistance is a normal part of the welding circuit, represented as the arc length when welding. Thus, the welder has some direct control over welding in an electrical circuit by how far the wire is allowed to stick out during welding, called contact tip to work distance, or CTTW. In this example, you see an appropriate CTTW distance and the resulting bead is smooth and blends in well with the base material. On the other hand, an exceptionally long CTTW distance results in a bead that is high crowned and ropey, as if it is lacking good fusion to the base material. Good conductors have low resistance and good insulators have high resistance. Amperage. Amperage is the flow of electrons. It remains constant throughout the circuit. Amperage is measured as the number of electrons that flow past a given point in one second. This is also called electrical current flow. The terms amperage and current are the same, and they mean the flow of electrons through a conductor. Amperage is represented by the letter I, which relates to its discoverer, who called it intensity of current. Just as we can measure the amount of water flowing through our pipe, we can also measure the amount of current flowing through a circuit. The flow of amperage stays the same through the circuit. 
In this example, you see a weld being made with a disproportionately high amperage, as well as a wide, uneven bead. This also results in a higher amount of weld wire being deposited. On the other hand, amperage that is appropriately matched for the voltage being used creates a smooth weld bead with even appearance and good fusion. When it comes to welding equipment, you'll need to understand both primary input power, or the wall power that's supplied in the shop, and secondary output power, which are the capabilities of your welding machine. Primary input power is what's supplied by the utility company or by a generator. It's supplied at a high voltage and low amperage. In the generation of electricity, the principles of magnetic repulsion and attraction are used to set electrons in motion for AC power generation. Common voltages for primary input power include 120 volt, 240 volt, 480 volt, and 575 volt with increasingly industrial applications as the voltages go higher. It's common for welding and fabrication equipment to run off of 240 volt or 480 volt input power. Single phase is most common for household applications. Most welding equipment can be run on single phase, but it's worth noting that some welding and fabrication equipment will only run on three phase. Single phase and three phase can also be represented by sine waves. As you can see, three phase power provides a more even power supply without moments of what's called zero power. In single phase, you can see there are times when the sine wave crosses the center line. These are moments when no power is produced and they're called zero power. Three phase has no such moments because there's continuous power provided. Three phase primary power also requires smaller diameter primary conductors and lower amperage rated circuit breakers or fuses. Secondary power output. Secondary power output is what's produced by the welding power source. It's been changed from the high voltage, low amperage primary to a low voltage, high amperage welding output that is much safer and much more useful for melting metal when welding. The secondary output power of the welding power source allows the welder greater control over the welding output being produced. Alternating current is the standard current supplied to homes and businesses. AC is also the most efficient for power generation and transmission because the electrons continually change direction in the circuit instead of making a full trip through the circuit. Alternating current is supplied at 60 Hz. This means that the electrons change directions 60 times per second. The rapid change is the reason why you don't notice the electrons changing direction. Each AC cycle has two halves, one positive and one negative. It's represented using this sine wave. Current flows in one direction during the first half of the cycle, and then it reverses direction for the second half of the cycle. Direct current, or DC, only flows in one direction. Converting AC to DC with a rectifier makes it usable for electrical circuits. The sine wave for DC shows the electrons always stay on the positive side and do not reverse direction. DC rectifiers convert incoming AC current to the DC current that is the output from your welding equipment. You can think of a rectifier as a one-way gate. It only lets electrons flow in one direction. Rectifiers stop electrons from flowing back through the circuit, just like a check valve keeps water from flowing back through a pipe. A rectifier acts as a gate to prevent current from flowing back through the circuit. So far, we've discussed alternating current as it relates to primary power. But it's also important to point out that some welding equipment is also specifically designed to be used with AC output power. This means this equipment can be relatively inexpensive, such as this SMAW equipment. However, the output tends to be relatively harsh, and it's difficult to achieve an attractive final product. When alternating current is used for output power, such as in GTAW on aluminum, it's often filtered and refined for a smoother output. Most welding is done with direct current. This means the electrons flow in one direction through the welding circuit. There are two possible combinations for DC current. DC electrode positive, which is also called reverse polarity, and DC electrode negative, which is also called straight polarity. Some welding equipment is designed to be used with welding processes like SMAW and GTAW that require constant current. 
These machines allow the operator to set the amperage, or current, as a constant while leaving voltage and resistance as variables that are affected by many other factors, such as the conditions of welding and the operator's technique. This is called constant current. Some processes, like GMAW and FCAW, require constant voltage. In this case, the voltage is set as the constant, while amperage and resistance are variables that can be changed. This is called constant voltage. Although they're typically more expensive, some machines can produce both constant voltage and constant current for multiple processes. This gives you maximum flexibility to switch between welding processes. In this module, we review the fundamentals of welding electricity. We introduced you to what electricity is, the parts of the welding circuit, AC and DC currents, and welding input power. You've completed the basics of welding electricity.